let's uh, just pick up on where we left. So last session, we defined the notion of monoids, right? Today, uh, the first thing I want to do is to define uh, the notion of an inverse element of a monoid, okay? So a monoid, you know, is, 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 a, is a triple, right? Made of a non-empty set, a binary operation, and uh, a special element uh, that we call the identity, right? And the condition was that uh, this, the set and the, this uh, are, uh, are semi-groups. You know what a semi-group is. Um, so um, giving an element of a um, uh, monoid, um, an element that we will write x minus 1, this is just notation, is called a left inverse of x if this condition is satisfied, if x minus 1 star x gives the identity. Okay, so if <laughs> acting from the left, that's why you know it's called left inverse. <laughs> if from the left hand side you do the operation, um, it yields the um, the identity, then it's a left inverse. Likewise, a right inverse if x uh, star x minus one gives the identity. Okay, and it's a two sided inverse. Uh, there is a name for this, which is a group inverse if it is both left and the right inverse. Okay. Now, I think it's already obvious that, uh, you know, from the examples that, uh, um, uh, from the example that we went through, we've been uh, going through in anything in the past, that not, not all elements of, uh, of a monoid necessarily have, a, have, have an inverse element, right? So let's see some concrete example. So, for example, consider this, the multiplicative uh, monoid, right, of the reals. So we have R together with the multiplication and uh, obviously the, the unit one, right? This is a monoid, right? So for any non-zero, non-zero element of the reals, um, uh, we have an inverse, right? Which is uh, uh, one over A, right? Correct, do I agree? Uh, um, yes, okay. And for uh well speaking of this that uh, not everyone has it so zero doesn't have a multiplicative inverse right because otherwise we like uh, you know um one over uh, zero right we know what uh, that gives right <laughs> so um um anyway um going back to the to 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 the second example um let's consider uh r with uh the, the additive structure okay so with addition Obviously, this is also a monoid, you know? In this case, we have zero, I'm oh, sorry, the, the slide. So in this case, we have zero as the identity, and uh, then any element in the, the thing on the reals has a, uh, uh, an inverse, in this case is, uh, you know, is the, the thing, the negative of it, right? So a minus, uh, a minus one is uh, minus a, right? So we agree on this also, I assume, right? Good, so this is all, so to sum up, a two-sided. What we are, what we are really interested in is on on monoids with two-sided uh, inverses. You know, so you know those of you already, you know, the super curious, uh, uh, we're uh, the super alerted. You know, you will already know that this is then, you know, um, where this is leading us to, right? Because this is what exactly what we need for groups. Okay, so. Let's uh, before we go to groups, let's uh, let's go to the to the, to the genesis of abstract group theory. I forgot to put the word abstract there, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's start with this thing called the fundamental theorem of algebra. Um, I abbreviated with the FTA. So, given a polynomial, right, uh, written like this of n degree, let's say with uh, coefficients uh, on the thing on the complex. On the, on the complex numbers, you know, with the, the, the a n obviously different than zero. Um, this theorem says that uh, this polynomial equation has at least one root in C, okay? Or equivalently, we can also say that every polynomial uh, of degree n with real or complex coefficients has n complex roots counting multiplicity, okay? So roots that can uh, um, uh, repeat themselves. So you don't, you don't need to worry about this, okay? Something very interesting here um, is that uh, a lot of the versions, especially the early versions of this, <laughs> um, didn't actually uh, 
provide the proof using algebraic methods. <laughs> so um, a lot of the proofs use, uh, uh, you know, methods from analysis and other and other fields, which uh, uh, made people think, why is it called fundamental uh, theorem of uh, uh, algebra if you can't even use algebraic method to prove it? Okay, but nowadays there are modern version versions of uh, um, of this theorem with uh, with proofs that. Uh, uh, use algebraic methods, in particular using, uh, in, in, for example, you know, in, in Galois theory, theory provides us uh, a way of doing that. We won't, we won't touch uh, how exactly, uh, because we don't have the language of a Galois theory, in this case, fields and fields tension and this type of stuff to do this. Um, anyway, what to know, this is just a side note. Um, the, the important thing is that, um, um, one thing is uh, this notion of uh, solving this by radicals, okay? So this, we say that um, this polynomial is solvable by radicals. So this, uh, with, uh, suppose that it has rational uh, coefficients, okay? So it's solvable by radicals if um, uh, um, using only rational numbers and the operations of addition, sub uh, subtraction, division, multiplication, and the end root, uh, to find a solution, okay. In other words, you know, I, I'll come in with an in, in, in example in, in 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 a minute. In other words, if we can use something similar to what we do with the second degree uh, polynomials, like uh, you know the quadratic formula, for instance, then we say this this uh, the polynomial is solvable by 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 radicals. Okay, I'm being a little bit sloppy because obviously we don't <laughs> we don't have time. This is just a high level overview, just to give you, okay. So, for example, uh, this consider this this is quadratic. This is all something that we learn in in, in school, right? You know, this uh, second degree uh, polynomial equation, right? And um, this can be solved by by radical by the quadratic formula that we all learn, right? Then um, the same thing also for third degree polynomial of this form, and the same thing for four degree polynomial of this uh, of, of of this of this uh, this form also. Now the question, a big question one. This is this was a big question back then, like centuries ago. <laughs> um, whether um, we can generalize this, the, what happened with the, you know these other uh, the lower degree polynomials to fifth or higher degree polynomials, okay? Or even better, can we even generalize it? You know, can uh, any can can, can can any polynomial of degree greater or equals to five be solved by radicals? Okay, so the question here, this is important. We are not asking whether, you know, um, there are, um, the question is not um, asking whether there are other methods of solving, uh, finding the solution. The question is whether using the radicals. So the question is about uh, um, the use of radicals in order to solve the, 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 um, the, the the equation that's the question not whether you know uh, we can have a, we have a solution because the fundamental theorem of algebra already tells you that uh, there is a solution yeah the question is how do you compute the solution in this case we're not asking whether there are other methods of uh, you know computing this is a classical question to, to this problem whether there aren't other me methods of computing the the, the, the the roots the solution for the equation but we are asking whether we can do it using radicals as uh, defined previously okay so the answer um, to this question is negative. We cannot. <laughs> so this is a famous uh, uh, abel ruffini theorem, also known as uh, Abel's impossibility theorem, uh, which essentially uh, uh, shows that uh, uh, not all polynomials of degree uh, uh, equal or greater than five can be solved by radicals, OK? Uh, for example, here's a, a toy example. I hope I got this uh, right. It, it doesn't matter, in, uh, I think, because you won't be able to, um, to, to, to think if you don't study Galois theory, you won't be able to verify whether I'm saying yes or uh, true, or whether I'm right or not, or wrong. Um, uh, but I believe this is, uh, this, is, this, is a this is a famous, actually, uh, the simplest example of, uh, of a fifth degree uh, polynomial that cannot be solved with the radicals, OK? And here's an example uh, that can actually be also solved. With the thing, you know, once you learn Galois theory, maybe you can uh, compute this and see <laughs> whether I'm saying uh, the, the reason why um, we'll get there in a minute. Um, how you can actually decide um, uh, how did how do we do how come we found out that uh, this cannot be solved by by radicals? Um, 
this is related to this question. So Abel Ruffini says that not all polynomials of degree um, uh, greater or equal to five can be solved, but it doesn't give us an option. You know, if I give you a polynomial, how do you know, you know, uh, whether it's solvable or not, you know? So um, that's, that's, that's a big question. This is where, where uh, uh, Galois, the essence of Galois theory is to try to answer this question. So when I give you uh, a polynomial, uh, you can go through um, a series of uh, um, uh, steps uh, of uh, techniques to find out, to decide whether it's solvable or not. Not necessarily, you know, find out the solution, but just the, the question to decide whether, uh, you know, you should waste your time trying to find uh, a way of solving it by radicals, right? So, okay, so the answer to this, to this question has been given by Galois. This is where um, uh, he, um, in his uh, seminal work, some of you, I, I really recommend you to ch check the, uh, the biography of uh, uh, Galois. He has a very interesting uh, biography, not just he was very young when he, um, he came up to his solution, uh, but he also died very young. He died when he was 19. And uh, it seems, I'm not sure whether it's, this is a myth or not, but a lot of the work uh, overnight before the duel, so he died in a duel. Um, unfortunately, and um, years later, another mathematician um, uh, uh, kind of uh, rediscovered his uh, his work, and then uh, obviously um, um, the uh, the thing he um, um, it was realized, you know, uh, how um, important his uh, his stuff uh, was to the to the thing to 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 the field. This gave uh, birth to what is now known in his honor, Galois theory. So in a nutshell, this is how um, the thing works. So I give you, you are giving a, a, an n degree polynomial, um, let's say of degree uh, greater or equals to five, right? So to find out if uh, P of X is solvable by radicals, the first thing you do is to compute um, a special group. Okay, so there's a group, group, the notion of group involved associated with the polynomial. So you compute the Galois group of the polynomial. Let's call it the Gal of uh, P of X, okay? The exact way of this, how this is done, this is out of scope of, uh, 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 for our purposes, because you know, this needs a bit of field theory in order to do that, but this is just to give you a flavor of uh, the, the, the procedure, okay? So that's the thing. So the, this is computable for all the fields, the most fields that we are uh, interested in, this is, this is computable. Um, um, uh, you can compute the Galois group of, uh, of any polynomial over most of the fields, like reals, uh, the, the, the things, the, the ones that uh, are in practice. There might be a few others that are a bit exotic. In fact, I might share some references where you might see examples of, of this, where of fields where this is not straightforward, or possibly not even, uh, or uh, not even possible. But uh, for our purposes and for most applied purposes, the fields that we are used to, uh, this is computable. The Galois group of any polynomial over a uh, field is computable. Um, so we we compute, we we find the Galois group, and then the way actually to check uh, uh, whether um, the, uh, the the polynomial is solvable by radical is to check something else, a uh, property related to the group, the the associated group with the polynomial, which is the notion of solvable group. This might be something that we will touch. Let's see how our group theory stuff goes. But if the, the associated um, Galois group of the polynomial is solvable in the group theoretic sense, it means the, uh, the, the thing, the, um, the uh, obviously the polynomial uh, is solvable by radical, okay? So this is very, 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 very interesting, as you can see, you know, translating a problem about one thing into a problem uh, about another thing. So this is really, this was really very, very, very revolutionary. Okay. So um, if the group is not solvable, obviously this means that it cannot be solvable by radical. So this is essentially the hack that uh, uh, Galois uh, did uh, to 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 answer the, the question of, uh, uh, deciding, you know, whether, uh, you know, when you are handed a polynomial, whether it's solvable by radical or not. Okay. So, um, the, obviously this, the field, the field of uh, Galois theory is so vast, <laughs> you know, it has, uh, you know, wide range of applications, you know, in information theory, in, in, in cryptography in particular, you know, stuff like uh, advanced encryption standard, for instance, 
and very interesting also it inspire other uh, you know other other stuff other very interesting uh, stuff like uh, you know uh, inspire lee sophus lee you know the the the, the person uh, um, named after lee groups for instance <laughs> to uh, pursue uh, some sort of uh, an analog of uh, Galois theory for uh, differential equations, for instance, you know? This is actually the genesis in a nutshell of, um, of Lie groups. This is uh, the, the, the thing, the inspiration for that. So, so the impact of it, it is really uh, massive, you know? Even though Galois had no intent, the, intent, the intended, uh, his intent, he actually, I think he was the first person to use the word group, I think. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe if you check the history, uh, you might correct me on that. But uh, the, the the field is really very, very, very impactful. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's a, a, a thing. A bit of a blah 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 about uh, you know the the thing. I thought it was useful, not least because I also I was running late doing the slides. <laughs> so now we can go to the main thing. <laughs> what really matters today. Okay. Um, I think I might have some thing with the, let's see. Okay, so the rest of the slides, just just uh, give me a second. The rest of the thing is not showing up. Hmm. Maybe it didn't save. <laughs> the second part, which is to do with the groups. Why is it not showing? Okay, so yeah, I think I might have it in mind. Yeah, just give me a second. I'll pull up my slides again. Uh, in the meantime, you can uh, you know go to the chat and discuss. Uh, coined the term group. Oh yeah, so George is correcting me that uh, Galois coined the the thing the um, the notion of uh, group. Thank you for the correction. Uh, <laughs> Dimitri saying, uh, yeah, well, it's one of those things that
Okay, I am back. Can you can you hear me? Sorry for this. Yes. Okay. So sorry for sorry for this, guys. <laughs> um, let me share the slides. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Only three slides to go. I I promise, and then we are we are gone. Okay. Um, Okay, what about the the thing, the screen? The screen, is it? Uh, can you see the slides? The screen, good slides visible. Okay, good. So let's let's let let's crack on. Um, okay, so here's the definition of group. So a group is a triple. Um, in this case, similar to monoid, you know, a triple. Uh, in this case, we call it G. Uh, but it also comes with a binary operation star, and it comes with this, uh, uh, you know, uh, a special element, okay, E, and it, sat it satisfies this, you know. So the the triple G star E is a monoid. You know what a monoid is, right? Okay, and for every uh, G, uh, uh, small G in, the, in 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 big G, there exists uh, an inverse in G. Okay, so every in other words, every every element has um, a group inverse in a, in a thing in, in in a group. Okay, just just a quick convention from now on. Um, I will just uh, write G instead of uh, you know writing uh, the, the the actual triple. So it it is to be understood that there is a binary operation and there is an identity uh, that we uh, we write E. And at some point we will change this also. In, instead of E, we will write something else. We'll, we'll see. And also instead of writing. Um, uh, say, for example, we have two elements, you know, G1, G2, instead of uh, writing the, uh, the, the, the binary, their product or their, uh, you know, the, the, the thing, the star product or whatever, uh, the, the star operation, in, if you want to be more abstract, G1 star G2, we'll just write it this way, okay? So it's like we'll just ignore the, the star, but it is to be understood that uh, um, the star is here somewhere, okay? Just to, to save us from... Uh, um, notation and this is also the most uh, how you see it most in in in, thing in in the books. This is standard notation stuff. Okay, uh, are you still with me? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, good to see you again. Yeah. So, so that's one convention. Another thing is another. This is more of a definition and uh, also uh, like uh, to fix notation. So, giving a group G. The cardinality, which is the number of elements of the of the of the, the underlying set, is called the order of the group, and this is normally denoted like this. So, if you see this, it means the order, the number of uh, elements of uh, of of G. This shows up in the next as we go along. This will show up a lot in some of the theorems and all this stuff. So, it's good that you know what it means. It just means the order, the the cardinality of it. And uh, another thing is, if the cardinality of it is um, uh, p, where p is some prime number, then we the group is called a p group. Okay, we'll come to this in the next uh, few sessions, uh, especially those of you who are interested in cryptography stuff. Okay, and uh, likewise, you know, similar to monoid, you know, a group is uh, commutative or abelian. Sometimes I use commutative, sometimes I'll use you know, the word abelian. If you know, g uh, g one uh, um, g two, you know, the product, uh, uh, you know commutes you know it's, uh, it's the same as uh, g2 uh, g1 okay for all for all g1 uh, g2 in in, in 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 the underlying set okay otherwise it's uh, non commutative or non abelian so yeah just stuff this is something that uh, you know you all you already know this now let's go through some examples i hope uh, you're still with me i know this is like a very simple example for, for most of you <laughs> yeah so suppose we have a, a um uh, um, a non-empty set, and suppose that G is the set of all bijections. This actually has a name that we will uh, uh, call this in the next section, which is a symmetric group of the, the set, the, the group of symmetries of, uh, of this set. But for now, let's uh, just uh, call it G, okay? G is a set of all bijections, okay? And suppose that the star is the, um, the composition of, you know, maps, you know, or functions, you know? So, this is the question is is this a group under the composition uh, the answer is yes this is a group is it abelian or non abelian the answer is also uh, non abelian because of the composition right 
So I know because uh, this is uh, you you already know this. <laughs> That's why I'm uh, just going through qu uh, quickly. I don't want to ask you for like uh, something that I know you know. <laughs> That's why. What about this? Let's G be the set of all n by n matrices with the complex entries. This could have been with the real entries or even integers or whatnot. You know. So like um, the question is. Um, under matrix multiplication, whether this is a group. And the answer is, uh, this is not a group, right? Does anyone doubt? Is there anyone who uh, doubts that it's not a group? So we can you know, go through why, why that's not the case. This is definitely, it's not a group, right? We are all, no inverse, yes, exactly. Not all elements have inverse, right? So it's not a group. What about, so this is the first question is, is under matrix uh, multiplication. Huh? What about the same set, so this uh, again, uh, of n by n matrix, but under matrix addition now? <laughs> is it a group now? <laughs> yes, yes, it is a group. So you can see how the binary operation stuff, you know, just as you saw with the semi-groups, comes to this you know depending on your it depends on your your, your 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 the underlying binary operation so the same set equipped with a different binary operation might behave completely different is is an example yeah it's a group and a billion yes in this case yes yes thank you stefan um and this one this one is a little bit harder to see but i know a lot of you already know this also this is also a group this is the the um the set of all invertible um uh, complex matrices it could also be you know real matrices it doesn't matter um but this is also a group you know you can actually verify this as a challenge that uh, you know uh when two matrices are invertible you know their product is also invertible you know um they also have inverse you know and and and, and so on this is called general uh linear group this is very important because um this Will contain the matrix groups, uh, the, the new groups that the you know the unitary groups, the you know the special unitary groups that we are interested in, you know, especially those who be interested in physics, you know, in quantum computing in particular, right? And for the real case, also you know, people interested in machine learning stuff, you know, uh, the orthogonal group, you know, the special orthogonal group, all these guys, you know, so. Um, it's a really very important uh, um, thing because it contains these very important uh, subgroups that uh, are of interest and have uh, very important applications across multiple fields. Uh, we will dig more in, into them uh, in, the, in the matrix groups uh, section. Okay, so that's it. So these are just examples. Obviously, uh, you know, I invite you to find uh, more examples, especially finite or finite groups. We will come back to them uh, later. Um, and finite in the multiplicative sense, for instance. And uh, here's a very important um, thing, this notion. I, I'm pretty sure I might have made a typo, but it doesn't matter. You understand what I mean? So this is the notion of uh, exponentiation. So you given an element of the group uh, and given uh, an integer k. So first we define, we say that the, exp uh, the, the, the power of, uh, of, of uh, of g to the to the to zero gives the identity, okay, and then we say, uh, okay, I, I forgot there is a typo here. It meant to be like uh, uh, here k times, so I'll correct the slides. So um, uh, g to the k, uh, you so you take the um, g to the power of k is just meaning that multiplying, you know, applying the, the binary operation k times, okay, when k is greater than zero, okay. When k is less is negative, all you do is actually the 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 the, the thing you apply the the same thing but to the inverse of g, okay? So this is what this 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 is telling you. So yeah, I hope it's not confusing. I will add this to k times here in, in the thing. There is a bit of a mess up on the slides. Um, is there any questions about the definition? Was there any confusion um, on this? Because this is very important. <laughs> Does negative? No, uh, this is just uh, maybe I should have put a bracket here uh, just to not uh, thing to say. So um, the, the so the negative power so the negative power of g is just equals to the to the thing to um, the 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 inverse uh, times k times. Okay.
and it will be interesting when you take the the, the thing maybe what you are saying is that if uh, you take the inverse of the inverse and 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 do the the thing of uh, negative uh, power but it's really simple the thing maybe i will simplify this 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 uh, this thing uh, uh, to make it less uh, less confusing but uh, um this is the thing so you have the positive so the, you know Say for example the the, the positive uh, power and you have negative power, you know. So the positive is just g uh, times itself, you know, k times, <laughs> whereas the, the 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 negative is the uh, the the the, term, the inverse of g times k times. Okay, that's that's what we are doing now. This the reason we need this is because we need uh, the notion of cyclic group. Yeah, C cyclic um, cyclic group. Um, Cyclic groups are very important, you know. Uh, we will come back to them in the next uh, session. That's why I'm defining this notion because we need this in order to define it. They are very important. They, they are uh, the key of, uh, you know, if you are interested in cryptography, for example, you know, the Diffie Hellman key exchange protocol, uh, you know, Alice and Bob, they agree on a uh, cyclic group. So that's, that's, that's one of the key things for them to be able to share, um, 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 exchange their, uh, their, their key, their, their stuff, their secret over over uh, an unsecured channels. We will see actually how this is done in, in, in a tech. So it's very important that you feel comfortable with this, especially when we get there, okay? And in particular, these properties, because they use the Diffie-Hellman property of uh, key exchange protocol uses this, uh, this, this is exactly the, this, this property of uh, uh, exponentiation. This is what enables them to, uh, uh, to, to make it uh, very hard for, uh, for, for tech. For uh, you know, um, what's the the person who is the bad person? Eve, in order to Eve to guess their uh, their shared keys. Okay, so feel comfortable with this, and this also you will see at some point it has a thing or connection with uh, with with the thing with the discrete. There's something called discrete logarithm problem, for instance. In fact, uh, the security of uh, the Diffie-Hellman key exchange protocol is exactly based on on the thing on on how hard it is to solve the discrete logarithm problem but this is something that will come back to it you know for the time being we need to understand first uh, what uh, uh, cyclic groups are but the first step is to know this okay i wanted to provide some exercises you know for you to practice uh, you know solving this maybe i will add extra, extra stuff because I, I was running out of time i will add extra slides so you'll probably not see the slides today maybe on monday or something so i can add some exercise for you to, to practice this uh, exponentiation and maybe even see some examples. Let's see, okay? But please, like, uh, just feel comfortable uh, looking at this, um, going through the definitions and these things. That's it. So this thing will be available on GitHub, the, the slides. Um, I want to add more, as I said, uh, more stuff here because I didn't have time to do that today. Uh, and then the recording will be available. Obviously, I will edit it uh, because it didn't go smooth as I was expecting. Um, which is normal because um, Crowdcast, the current version that we are using, is uh, is in beta testing mode at the moment. Yeah, so that's it. Ah, another thing I wanted to to ask because uh, um, Crowdcast, we are using this um, this uh, we are like uh, we had the privilege to be invited to be part of their beta testing. You know, so we have a limited amount of uh, sessions that we can create. <laughs> so I was wondering if uh, you guys, you would be interested in holding like uh, um, uh, maybe a monthly meetup, community meetup, you know, where you can, you know, discuss among yourselves or something, something like that. Um, if this would be useful, I'm happy to invite one of you to be organizing it, you know, create events, you know, maybe once a month, some sort of a, a discussion or something like that, you know, ab about whatever topics that you want to talk about. So uh, maybe this is something that I can also follow up uh, uh, in more uh, to, um, uh, after to see whether anybody offers to be a, like a volunteer organizer for this. Okay, so that's it. Um, is there any question that I missed? Um, maybe George, raise your hand to see if I can see you and uh, bring you on stage to see if you can comment on anything or so hum or anybody else who wants, because we can actually bring, I can bring more people on stage. <laughs> okay, so one user wants to come on stage. Let's see. I click accept. So George accept. I think I accepted George. Let's see if we can bring George on stage. 
Ah, I can see you. I can see your icon. This is definitely getting. Um, uh, okay, I I can hear you and I see the slides now. So we that seems to work. I can hear you too. Yeah. You're still there, George, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've somehow managed to figure it out. So there's some trickiness in being invited on stage and having it work. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe, so, yeah, go ahead. maybe Crowdcast can document it better for, for this new version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I see a question or on chat. I think Stefano is suggesting, you know, the study sessions that you hold on on thing on 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 is it Discord? <laughs> do you yeah. guys want to do it on Crowdcast so you can like maybe you know have like a share screen with each other? I don't know whether Discord enables you guys to do that. Uh, It doesn't need to be like you don't need to record it or anything you know obviously if you want to record it and leave it for other people to see you know you going through the argument that's also fine but it's like uh, um if it's if it helps i'm happy to invite you maybe george as an uh, as a thing as an event organizer you can then create uh, um... yeah if 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 screen share would be a total win for crowdcast over discord mm -hmm. with, with discord it's a bit awkward you can post things yeah you can post static images into the discord chat but actual screen share would be much more powerful yeah okay so you want me for the next uh, you still plan to do like next friday uh the the study session I can invite you. I can even create an event just to just in case. <laughs> so it's all uh, created, and I make you as a host. I might actually join it just to start it, so it's uh, to make sure that there are no trouble. Um, and then you know, we yes. see how it. As as long as we're having the main lecture every other week, I'm willing to do the study sessions on alternate weeks. Okay, yeah. In that case, yeah. I think uh, at this stage, especially now, I think we are. It's more uh, more practical to do this uh, this thing of uh, having the study sessions the week after because you have enough time to digest stuff on your own, you know. So, yeah. Okay, so in that case, I will I will I will create um I will create uh, uh, an event and then I will invite you so we can test having the study sessions next week. You can still show up on Discord. Maybe we share the link there, just in case, yeah. <laughs> and 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 then we we take it from there. Yeah, and it will be a chance to work out the bugs in uh, Crowdcast. Yeah, they actually they are very keen to that because the more events yeah. they have, <laughs> the, the the thing, and some of them are uh, their engineers actually afterwards they they check the logs of uh, our stuff. Um, to, you know some of the issues uh, that we've been facing are uh, um, are logged, so uh, they will check in later also to check the the, the session. Yeah, because oh, that, that, uh, I, that's also good. I also recommend them. I also recommended them to support the LaTeX on the chat. <laughs> oh yeah, because beta testing should be a two way street <laughs> that yeah. they get the feedback. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, was there anything I, 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 I missed on the chat? Any other comment you want to make? I know we didn't cover that much today, but uh, at least uh, we are into group now. <laughs> we are into, in the thing, in the group, group section, you know? So, yeah. Uh, does anyone have any other comment before we, 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 we end? Am I still even on? <laughs> yes, okay. So I think maybe we lost George. Yeah. Uh, okay, now I, I, I still hear and see. Okay. Um, 
yeah so i guess we don't have any 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 other thing to to go through so leave it with me this thing of trialing the the study sessions uh, for for next week we we try some uh, use uh, crowdcast yeah i will be uh, joining just to see but uh, i will not interfere i will just uh, uh, just for the sake be here for, just for the sake of helping uh, george uh, on the thing on the setup and then i will disappear Yes, full steam ahead with groups, no more semis. Yeah, there's a, like an urgency because of this uh, uh, applied uh, uh, virtual schools that we plan, like on quantum error correction. The sooner we get into list of the better. So, yeah. So next week we'll already start diving into uh, you know important group theoretic stuff like uh, cyclic groups and and so on. So, yeah, it will be really interesting, and uh, I think uh, I might have some go through with you some uh, like an overview of uh, what a symmetric uh, crypto system uh, cryptographic system is just in to, to see how cyclic groups uh, you know the diffie hellman key exchange protocol uh, works so you have a, a, an understanding of 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 of, of, uh, of it uh, we'll see how how it goes so it could be we we once we we have the, cyclic, the notion of cyclic group and these things and then i define um what uh, uh, symmetric is is much more simpler to, to start with the symmetric uh, um, cryptography uh, and then the the problem of sharing uh, the key over an secure uh, channel so you can see how the the thing the um, the um, the protocol works you know how how they use cyclic groups to generate uh, secure keys and be able to share them without Eve knowing it. Yeah, the actual we will have. I know I have. I, I said we'll have a, a session. We will have another session more on the applied side, so you can go with the actual maybe uh, the person, uh, the uh, applied cryptographer will 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 get uh, uh, you know uh, a little bit more uh, deeper hands on 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 the thing. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So Stefano definitely looks forward to this. Yeah. I also. <laughs> so let's see. Um, I just think it's a nice, nice addition to see, you know, we cover something and then you see, at least on the theory side, you know, um, and then maybe you can go do some exercises and, you know, who knows, maybe you can, you will come up with a way of uh, finding a new attacks into, into, in, in, in thing. So, yeah. Okay. So nobody has any questions. Okay. In that case, you know, yeah. Go ahead, I just George. like to, yeah, no, I just like to comment in support of looking at the applications. The first time I took group theory was incredibly painful because it was totally abstract, Boba key style with no motivation whatsoever. Yeah, this is one of the things that, uh, you know, obviously going through the uh, different uh, modules that I mean, the first two courses, course series, I I, I could see that, uh, you know, adding more, more thing motivation makes people more motivated to learn, right, to, to go through the pain as opposed to just going through the pain without seeing, you know, what's the point. <laughs> so actually, yeah, interesting use cases, especially popular stuff, you know, things that people are already, uh, you know, familiar with, especially things that, uh, that have been deployed in industry, for instance, you know, the Diffie Hellman key exchange protocol, <laughs> uh, you know, has been deployed. So, you know, and this type of stuff is, uh, is very, uh, very useful. Okay, so in that case,